I'm going to have to go back to the very beginning of the lesson. But again, that's how God wanted. That's how it's going to be. Remember, we started with the heart of man. We ended up in a certain area here. But we are giving God thanks for that area that we are in. And he says, the heart must be prepared. God wants to transform your heart so that he can work with you, that he can enlighten you, that he can bring you to that point of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So look at how he is moving with the heart. So sometimes we have to go back over some of these lessons so that we can truly get the, the knowledge of it. So I'm going to have to go back with you to the book of Philippians, the second chapter of Philippians, if you would go with me. I wish you would, you know, because we have different type of Bibles. And in some, some of the Bibles, you know, it's not always saying the same thing. Hi, Jared. We give, you, give God thanks for you, brother. Thank you for being on. Yes, the second, second chapter of Philippians, the 13th and 14th verse. Hear what it is saying here. But now in Christ Jesus... Ye who was sometimes, hold a minute, the 13th verse, yes. Ye who was sometimes, I'm reading for you from Ephesians. I need to go to Philippians. That's where I need to go. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I recognize the reading there. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing when we seek to prepare there is a certain amount of disputation we have to dispute certain things because we have to realize in so many cases facts are going to dis listen facts are going to destroy your belief at some point in time facts are going to bring you to a point that you would question yourself and hear what it says. This is why I say facts, belief, and information are three different stages of life. And within those three different stages of life, it could be very confusing. Because this is what my father told me. So when my father told me that, you know, I believe this. This is what my grandmother told me. You know, and I believe what my grandmother said. I believe what the minister said. But we're coming down to facts. And facts is going to interfere with your faith. Facts is going to interfere with your belief because facts is facts. Facts is the truth. As John 17, 17 say, the word of God is truth. The only thing that is true is the word of God. And this is where we must stand. So he is calling us and asking us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And I pray that everyone who was with me would, would return so that we can continue all in the name of Jesus Christ. Sorry for the disruption. It was no fault of mine. But I'm giving God praise and thanks so that we can continue on our journey. Giving God the honor and the glory because God is worthy. God is worthy and he is worthy to be praised. So let us give him praise. Let us give him thanks. Let us give him the honor and the glory. He is able to to be praised he is able to be praised and we trust him for his grace and for his mercy so look at where we are we come now to the town the town remember i will read this first verse again because this is where we were the 16th chapter of proverbs the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is of the lord so many a times what we do, we say, you oh, know, the Lord, you know something? I wanted to do this, you know, and God disappoint me. God never disappoints his children. But what God does is he points out. He points out that area that you and I should walk. He points out that area that we can gain victory. He points out that area so that we can be all that he wants us to be. 
So never say that God disappoints. He never disappoints his children, but he points you in the way. Sometimes you might be, you may grow up in a certain field, but God wants you to do certain things. God wants to work with you in other areas, maybe to come back in that very field that you were once were. So again, we have to understand these areas, look at them, and look at them carefully. So again, as we started, I begin now to teach on the tongue. Let us look at the tongue. The tongue can be very detrimental. The tongue can be very uplifting. The tongue can be a very wise instrument. And remember what I said, an instrument. It can be, if used properly, if used for the honor and glory of God, it can be a very helpful instrument. So we're dealing with the tongue. And again, it brings us to that point to contrast of goodness and evil. And you will see that in these two first verses. The first, the first verse of the 15th chapter begins to speak. Soft, a soft answer, turn away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue, observe, the tongue of the wise speak, use that knowledge aright. The tongue of the wise. You know, we could be saying this, the right thing, but the manner in which we say it confuses. There are those of us who don't believe in the Trinity, but the Trinity is there when you go back and you begin to, to understand what Christ was speaking to us in the book of, of John. When he said, listen, I want you to know this. It is expedient for me to go. Because if I didn't go, the comforter, the spirit of truth, he, observe here, he will not come. And if I go, the father will send him. So we are speaking of three people here walking in unison walking together, understanding each other in morals, in love, in compassion, in every sense of the word. So when we begin to understand this and we begin to walk as he wants us to walk, we are going to truly be able to give him that honor and glory. So the tongue of the wise use that knowledge aright. But the mouth of the fool Pour it out foolishness. And this is what is happening. So sometimes we are in a situation and facts begin to show itself. And when facts begin to show itself, sometimes you cannot even tell mommy. You cannot even tell daddy. Because they have held on to their belief for so long that you cannot bring them to that point so that they can once more understand. So this is where we are today. We have to understand the power of the tongue. And remember what I did for you. I took you to the book of Isaiah, or Jeremiah. The reason for this is too many of us as Christians, too many of us as children of the Most High God find ourselves in situations when the time comes for us to deliberate on behalf of God, we begin to say how weak we are. We begin to say we are children. And I'm here, I've heard it so many times, I'm a babe in Christ. How long are you going to be a babe in Christ? The time has come for you to grow. The time has come for you to stop using milk. The time has come for you to eat dumpling, do some, eat some kind of heavy food. This is what God had called you for. And this is what he was doing to Moses in the fourth chapter of Exodus the 11th verse, 11 through 15, this is where he began to speak to Moses. And Moses began to make all the excuses why he couldn't go before Pharaoh, because he couldn't speak. I'm not a man of, of eloquence. I'm, I'm a man who stammers. I'm, you know, I cannot speak well. God got angry with him in the 14th verse. And God said, listen, isn't Aaron the Levi your brother? Well, he is on his way, and I, I, what I showed you there is the love that God had and the fellowship and compassion that even in anger, you see what it says here, the wise uses knowledge aright. 
So God didn't holler at him. God didn't put him down. God didn't make him feel less than a man. He said, listen, man, even though God was angry, and the scriptures say God was angry, the 14th verse of the fourth chapter of Exodus says God was angry. But yet still, hear the words. Isn't Aaron the Levi your brother? He is on his way to meet you. And when he meets you, he will be so happy to see you. Is these, are these angry words? No, they are not. They are not angry words. They are words of love, compassion, fellowship, and encouragement. And this is what God was doing. God also looked on the curiosity of Moses. He could have stand there on the backside of that mountain and just watch that tree burn again as so many of us do. We sit in churches and the Holy Spirit is moving us and we sit there and we wouldn't move and then when we come out of church now, we say, man, God should... And why, why are you telling me this now? Because God wanted to use you there and then because somebody was in need but you didn't because you were afraid. Maybe afraid of the minister, you were afraid of somebody, you were afraid of what somebody might say. I am calling out to you today to believe. As we go into the book of Jeremiah, I want to read to you from the first verse, from the first chapter rather, not the first verse of Jeremiah. And we're gonna take a few verses. So let us go from verse four of the first chapter. And I want to give you an endorsement here. He said the prophet were called and endowed by God. Here what it continued the reading. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, Before I formed thee, in the belly I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet to unto the nations. I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. In other words, at one point in time, Jesus was speaking and he asked the question, you know, he asked the question, who formed the, who formed the town? Who formed the blind man? Who formed, who gives sight? Who gave all of these things? And nobody could have answered. And that is, those are some of the things that I believe he spoke to Moses. And Moses could not answer. You see, Moses couldn't give. I want to read that for you because I want you to get that message. I want you to get it so clear in your mind and in your heart. Hear what it says here. In the 11th verse after Moses said, You know, I'm not eloquent, neither head of, head of, head of four, nor since thou had spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech. Are you making excuses to God for all the years that he had been calling you? Oh, I'm afraid. All the years that he was instructing you to come before him so that he can endow and, and, and anoint you a prophet or whatever the case may be that he desires to create or office he flees to put on you. You continue to make excuses. Hear what God is saying here. And the Lord said unto him, who had made man's mouth? And this is from the 11th verse of the fourth chapter of Exodus. Who had made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or see, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. You see, God is always there. God is able to provide. God is but a good provider, and he promised that he would never leave us. He promised that he would stand by and with us through all our ups and downs. He is going to be there for us. So again, this is what he is saying in the book of Jeremiah. Then said I, Lord, God, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. This is what I am saying to you tonight. We need to be able to bring ourselves before God and become usable. And what happens to us in so many cases, it is fear. 
let me allow me to show you this. The eighth verse of this very first chapter of Jeremiah says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. You are not alone. But God is with you and he will deliver you. He will enlighten you. He will give you the, the words to speak. He will give you the right things to say. And as we go back into the book of Matthew, again, it is so much here for us to learn, so much here for us to understand. But we have to ask the questions. We have to be willing to be used by God. We have to be willing to allow God to take full charge and most of all, control over us. Too long I've been hearing, I'm but a babe. How long now since you've been born again? How long now since you've been a child in the kingdom? How long now since God had called you and anointed you and robed you and clothed you for his kingdom so that you can carry his message? How long now? Are we going to stay babes? Or are we going to seek to grow in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Hear what it says from the 10th chapter of St. Matthews, the 19th verse. And when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. So it's not about you. It's not about me. But it's about God. And just as he said to Moses, he said, I made the dumb. I made the deaf. I made the blind. I created the mouth. I created the tongue. And I want you to know that I will give you the words to speak when the time comes. So take no thought. And this is what Jesus is saying here. In other words, what he is saying, they're going to deliver you up, you know. There are times when they're going to call you to do certain things. Should you be prepared? I say, I'm saying to you, if you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. Because this is important for us to understand. So that this is, God is saying here, man. He said, for it is not you that speak. But the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. It is not you that speak. But the spirit of your father. And you know, as we go in the book of John. There are some things there that is so important and I will have to go back to that because it is important for us to really memorize and keep in our hearts and in our minds especially in this 16th chapter he said I have many I'm reading from the 12th verse of the 16th chapter of St. John he said I have many I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? Observe here. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall, bless the Lord, O my soul. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. And all things that the Father had a mine, therefore I say unto you, I said, I, I therefore said I, that he shall take of mine. And shall show it unto you. Right there we are seeing Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are those who don't believe in the Trinity. But this is what we, we are speaking of here. How can you preach the word? I know it's one God. The creator of heaven and earth. And he created as he sees fit. He created as it pleases him. He gave power and authority as it pleases him. So let us not go back into those areas here and really confuse ourselves and others. Listen, hear what it says here in the 20th verse of the 10th chapter of Matthew. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. 
but the spirit of your father that speaketh in you. I want to take you again. I want to go to 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 Luke, the book of Luke. But let us let us go to yes, Luke. Let us go to the book of Luke, the twelfth chapter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we just step in back, the twelfth chapter of Luke. And I want to deal a bit from the eleventh verse of this twelfth chapter of Luke. And when they bring you, this is just a build up. And when they bring you into the synagogue, what he is doing here is making it a bit clearer so that we can understand even better. And when they bring you into the synagogue and unto magistrates and powers, take no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. You see, this is a state of faith and belief. That when you are called, I'm speaking here, you're not going before magistrate and all the rest of it. I'm speaking in the house of God, in the house of worship. And the Holy Spirit moved and called you to say something. Or the Holy Spirit is moving you to get up and say something. Take no thought of it. But just give God your heart. Just as I am without one plea. Surrender to God and let God use you. And you are going to find yourself in a place of blessing. That you and all will want to know. Is it I? And it's a good thing to question. Is it I? But to the end of it. Give God the glory. So what does it say? When they bring you into the synagogues. And unto magistrate and powers. Take ye no thought how or what things ye shall answer. Or what ye shall say. Observe here. For the Holy Ghost. Shall teach you. In the same hour, what ye ought to say. For the Holy Ghost, this is Jesus speaking. The red letter edition is Jesus speaking. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you what ye ought to say. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. You see, God is moving in such a way. And he is, I don't want to go into that area there of scripture now. But again, this is important for us to see and to know. The areas here of challenge. The areas whereby we must understand what the Holy Ghost is doing and how the Holy Ghost will work in our lives. How the Holy Ghost is going to use us for the work, for the honor, and for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, I remind you, say not I'm a child. I challenge you today. Say not I'm a child, but open your mouth. Remember the question that he asked Moses, who created the mouth? Who created the deaf? Who created the dumb? Who created the blind? Who made the lame to walk? Isn't it I? He spake unto Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, before you entered into your mother's womb, I knew thee. Now you are telling me before you came out, I ordained you a prophet. Now you are saying to me, I cannot speak. Say no more, I'm a child. These words are powerful words coming from the Lord. Say no more, I'm a child. But I'm a prophet. I'm an anointed of the Lord. I've been washed in the blood of the Lord. I am a blood washed Christian. I'm no longer a sinner. But I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I'm saying to you tonight. Again I repeat. If we fail to prepare. Prepare to fail. So then why are we going to church day after day. And when the moment or the time arrives. And we are called to. To honor God, I say honor God, or glorify God, or to say something good about God. You say, you know, I'm, I'm only a babe in Christ. You know, I cannot speak. I, let us move away from that. Let's, as we're speaking here, we're going to Luke 21. You see, it's just taking you to a higher and a deeper level of understanding who you are and why you are called to be the person that you are. What is the reason that God came? And remember, when he came, he gave himself over. He turned it all over. 
He gave himself up. He surrendered. Why are you so hesitant to surrender tonight? Surrender. Give God your heart. Let him use you. Feel the joy that even though when you stand up there and you are speaking, you know, as it happened to me at one time, they, they called me the, the, the weeping prophet because I used to be just crying. When the joy of speaking the word, it was just tears. People thought something went wrong, but no, it was nothing. However, God see to use you, say, use me, Lord. But then we must bring ourselves to that usable state. And that usable state is being willing to walk in his will, being willing to trust him for wherever he would lead you. Where thou leadest, I will follow. I will go with thee through the garden. Wherever you lead me, Lord, I will follow. So let us take a look at the book of the 21st chapter of Luke from the 14th verse. Sometimes we plan. You know, and as I want to say this. Sometimes as ministers... We set and we bring ourselves to a point we know what we are going to speak of today. We know what our message will be today. And if you are really walking in the light of the word of God, I want to tell you something. Church, what is going to happen is that sometimes the lesson you plan is not what God wants you to speak. God doesn't care about that message. And if you are studying when you get there and you don't have to be studying, he will be able to put it into your mouth and he will provide the things for you to say. Say what he, don't move away from it, but just remember it is God that is speaking and not of you of yourself. You see, and when you allow God to speak, sometimes you will have to go back home and make researches. What did I say? How did I say this? Is it scriptural? But again, remember... It is the Holy Spirit. Remember what I just said to you. And I want to read that again because sometimes we get kind of confused. And I don't want you to be confused. I don't want you to be confused at all. So I'll have to go back to this verse. The 12th chapter. And I think it's the 15th verse. The, or the 12th verse. The 12th chapter, the 12th verse. Mm -hmm. Can you hear what they say? For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. So then why are you fearful? Don't take no thought of when they bring you before the magistrate or the, the synagogue. Take no thought of that. Because you have an advocate. And that advocate is the Holy Spirit. And that is the promise that God made when he spake in the book of of John, the 16th chapter, he said, it is expedient for me to go. Because if I didn't go, the comforter, the spirit of truth will not come. So he is going. And the spirit of truth is coming. And where is he? Sitting at the right hand of the father. And the spirit of truth, yes, it's a projection of the father and himself. All working in us. So when we say the Trinity, we know what we are speaking of. And we know why we say the Trinity. Because the word of God speaks. And it speaks clearly. And if, listen, only the word. Oh man, I, I, you're making me go back to John. I, I'm going back to John 17. I want you to, because listen, never mind how long it takes. It is for us to know what God is saying. John 17 and 17. The 17 chapter of St. John's Gospel, the 17 verse. I'm speaking it in this manner because I want you to get the message. You can go back and see, look the video up and find out what I'm saying here. Hear what it says here. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. And if the word of God is truth, and the word of God says that I have to go to heaven, I have to go back to the Father and sit at the right hand of the Father. And when I go there, I will send the Holy Spirit to work with and among you. And most of all, to bring to memory the things that I have spoken unto you, the things that you cannot remember offhand. 
he will bring it back to memory. He will enlighten you and bring you to a greater knowledge of understanding who God is. So we're going now to the 21st chapter of Luke. And I want to take you from the 14th verse. Why am I doing this? Is because we must have a foundation. And that foundation must be the word of God. Why? As I just read to you, the word of God is true. And regardless of what man may say, they come to your house and they tell you, well, it, Jesus is not the son of God. Jesus is not this and Jesus is not that. The Bible never says that. Man is saying that. On the day of John's baptizing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the heavens opened and a great witness took place. A voice that no one and they didn't see who speak, but they heard a voice saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And that is what I'm going to go on. Never mind what intellectuals may say. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this is what we have to go by. Everybody looked around. All those who were on the bank of that Jordan that morning was looking around. And what they saw is the dove, the witness the Holy Spirit came and rest upon his shoulders. And John was able to confess and say, the voice said to me, the one who you see the Holy Spirit come down and rest on and remain, this is he. So what are we doing? Why are we doing what we are doing in so many areas? So we need to understand, and I want you who are believers of the word, I want you to hold on to the word this, this is why I read for you from the 17th chapter of St. John, the 17th verse, what says, Lord, sanctify them through thy word, for thy word is true. Let no man move you from these areas, but stand firm in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Fear not, he said, for I am with thee. And sometimes as I speak, we plan what we want to say. We plan what we want to do for God. We plan how we want to go for God. We plan all that we want to do for God. And I'm asking you today to think again and to understand what God is saying. As we read from this 21st chapter, I'm going to read from the first 14th verse. 21st chapter of Luke, the 14th verse. Settle it therefore in your heart. Not to meditate before what you shall say. Oh man, what are you saying? What are you saying to me? Well, I'm saying to you, if at all they should hold you, they should lock you up, they should do whatever they did to you, don't think about it. For righteousness sake I'm speaking, for the love of God, for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to think of what to say. God is going to fill your mouth. He said, don't even meditate. And this is what's happening. We know what we want to say. And if we have, a, sometimes we come in a church and we have a whole five pages that we want to speak on. Excuse me a minute. We have five pages, you know, and we read it all. Let God have his way in a minute. Allow God to use you. Allow God to speak through you. And if he want to have you running from the, from the altar to the door, and when you reach in the middle of the church to stand up there and speak, then let God use you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God use you. You don't plan and you just come here and you stand up like a statue and you're speaking from 9 o'clock till 12 o'clock. Nobody understands people sleeping on you because no Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost. All we become here as intellectuals. You stand up here and you're dragging your foot. You're not, you can't even feel a little joy. This is not what it is. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of God is, there is joy. Where the spirit of God is, there is healing. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. So yes, we can be good intellectuals and you study a lesson. And I studied to come before you. I had to study. I couldn't just come before you. But I cannot be just reading hallelujah, praise the Lord, and this is... No. 
You have to allow God, give God that freedom to work in you and through you in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, show yourself up and I'll place you in there. Cannot see you. Come on up. Yes, in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give God the praise. Give God the thanks. Give God the honor. Give God the glory. Because he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Let God have his way. Settle it, therefore, in your heart. Not to meditate before ye shall speak. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries are not able to gainsay nor resist. All your adversaries are not able to gainsay or resist. And ye shall, listen, and ye shall be betrayed. Things are going to happen to you. But this is what we have to do. This is where we have to go. We have to be able to do God's will and do it. So I'm asking you, fear not. Think not of what you might have to say. Think not of what you would want to say. But let God have his way. Let God have his way. And he will be. He will be all that God be all that God wants you to be. In the almighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Trust God. Trust God for his grace and let him be what he wants you to be in the name of Jesus Christ. So again, I want to remind you as children of the Most High, settle it, therefore, in your heart, not to meditate. Don't go about thinking, well, this is what I want to say. This is what I want to say. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. No, let God have his way so that he can guide you through. You know, let's go to Revelation, the book of Revelation. Let's go there. That's the last book of the Bible. And we're going to see something there. How God moves. And why I'm taking you there? The second chapter of Revelation. Why I'm taking you there? It's simply because we need to know, we need to understand, we need to be able to do all that God wants us to do so that we can give him the praise, we can give him the thanks, and we can give him the honor, and we can give him the glory. Hear what the book of Revelation says, and I'm going to read one verse here, the 18th verse. And unto the angel of the church in Tyratia write these things said the Son of God, who had give, listen, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Now, we, this is another topic, but again, all of this is do not think, do not worry. This is he who is going to make you what he wants you to be. We could question this. Who carries the, the feet as, a, as fine brass? Who carries the, the eyes of a flame of fire? Who carries the woolly hair? As we go back to the book of Revelation, when John beheld the altar of, from the Isle of Patmos, what he saw. Let us, let us be all that God wants us to be so that we can give God, the honor and the glory. We can give God the, listen, the ability to stand and to do those things that is pleasing, righteous, and acceptable in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we begin to understand and to walk in it, we will know that no longer you should be calling yourself a child. No longer you should be calling yourself anything other than a friend of the Lord. A friend of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is who he is to us. A friend of our Lord 
and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, as we look at the second chapter, speaking of the tongue, of the wise that use that knowledge aright, but the mouth of the fool pour it out foolishness. I pause here because I want you to see, I want you to know, sometimes we do things and we are coming down to a close in these areas here. You might see me moving across. I'm trying to bring somebody on that wants to be. Let us look at the second verse. The tongue of the wise. And listen, the tongue of the wise. This is the second verse of the 15th chapter. The tongue of the wise use that knowledge aright, but the mouth of the fool pour it out foolishness. Observe what is said in the 16th chapter because this is where we are on the very first verse the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the lord the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the lord look at something here let us go to proverbs six, proverbs 16 and 25 the same chapter right here just the 25th verse I want you to see this. It's important. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of but the end thereof are the ways of death. We plan. And God in his mercy will point out so that you would not go that way, because that way might be the way of death. We have to be able to bring ourselves to that point so that we can give honor. And glory to God. I'm reading Proverbs 22, 21 and 2. You don't have to go there. But if you listen to what I'm saying, you will understand. It's all dealing with the tongue. It's all dealing with how we carry ourselves. It's all dealing with making us worthy to be the apostles of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. True faith. He say every man, every way of man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the heart. So it comes right back to the heart. All the ways of man is right in his own eyes. And this is what I'm saying to you. Man appoint, but God points out. I will show you this as we go to the book of Samuel. And we will close with this. The book of Samuel is a beautiful area here for us to really understand what is happening the book of samuel first samuel 15 hallelujah it's right here first samuel 15 and i want to read from 13 to 14 it's going to give you a little idea of how we are dealing when we are speaking and we are walking in the knowledge of christ we are going to do the things that god wants us to do let us give thanks. So let us see what the 13th verse is saying here. And Samuel came to Saul. And for you to get a full understanding, you will have to read the whole chapter. But I mean, I'm giving you the highlights of it. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. What is this commandment? God had sent Samuel to go and to destroy all the Amalekites. He did, not Samuel, he sent uh, Saul to destroy the Amalekites. He said, man, woman, child, and beast. So we do not understand what is happening, but that area was an area of deadly sin. And even the children, remember we say I was shaping in iniquity and in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. Well, that sin was so deep that God said, destroy everything. You know, I remember when the children coming through the walls of Jericho and God said, do not take up a stone. Do not take up anything from, in the, from in between, within that walls. But yet still one took up a piece of gold. Because, you know, we get so carried away. And this is what happened to Saul here. What happened to Saul here? I'm going to read the 14th verse and then explain what happened. And Samuel said, what meaneth then this bleating 
of the sheep in my ear and the lowing of the oxen which I hear. No, Samuel didn't go out there physically see it. But we are speaking of spiritual movements here. And Samuel was able to hear the bleating of the sheep and the lowing of the cattle. And he is asking, no, what happened? But what do you think went wrong with Saul? Saul saw the fatted calves. Saul saw the fatted sheep. And Saul in his heart said, well, this is good for the children of Israel. God did not want that. God said, destroy it. And because Samuel, I mean, Saul walked in his own way, right there and then, his bishopric was taken away. He was no longer, he was only physically king, but he was no longer spiritually king. And it was just a matter of time. Because immediately from there on, God instructed Samuel, go to the house of Jesse and anoint one who was named David to be king over Israel. So even though Saul was still walking with the crown on his head, Samuel was walking in the anointing of the kingship. And this is what it means. When you are called and when you are instructed, when you are guided, let us walk as guided. Let us walk doing the things that Christ called us to do so that we would be able to truly give him the honor. We would be able to give him the glory and we'd be able to receive from him as needed in our lives. So I want to thank you and I want to say I'm sorry that we had to, to cut off the way in which we cut off because I began the first taping and it just in the middle they said that there is a problem which I had no authority over but thank God for the equipment and we were able just to jump over to bring it on to you I pray that we would not have that problem but again I still have to thank God that we were able to carry it through and we maybe we didn't go all where we needed to go but one thing I want you to remember say no longer I'm a child but you are anointed of the Lord. You see, I want to say this. We don't baptize babies. We don't baptize babies. We offer up babies. And we do to them according to the customs of the law. We still do that. We offer them up as a chain. An added member of the family. We don't baptize babies. You see, baptism comes when you reach to that point of understanding. And the criteria for baptism is believe, repent, and then be baptized. You must believe. In other words, you must be taught of the way of Christ. You have to be able to reach that point of repentance whereby you can say, yeah, Lord, I'm sorry. And then be baptized. So these are the three criteria, and a baby cannot do that. Thank God for the innocent soul. If they should, if they should die, thank God they've been washed from that stain of sin. But the true acceptance of Jesus Christ, a baby cannot do that. You notice sometimes you're offering up a baby, and that baby crying on the altar, making noisy water, and all it baby cannot, don't understand. We take a tip of, oh yes, a little tip of salt and we put on the tongue so that they would learn taste. Remember the tongue. I said the tongue. And this is how important it is for us to understand. So when we begin to walk in that, so again, as I said to you, when you are a baptized member and you can reach that age, you know, as long as you reach the point where you can acknowledge. And in, old, in the Old Testament time, it was from 12 years. By you reach the age of 12, you know, you're supposed to know about the first five books of the Bible. And this is what it should be. So all of these areas here are things that is required of us to know so that we can grow and share the will of God. So baptism carries a criteria and this is why John was crying out he must be born again he wasn't speaking to the babies 
He was speaking to those who reached that point of understanding. He said so far that the axe is placed upon the root of every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit. It shall be hewn down, not the babies, not the innocent babies. Observe what Herod did with the innocent babies. Over 300 young males were crucified in search of our Lord and Savior. Blood was shed for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These young babies, innocent. That's another story. That's another area. But blood had to be shed. He came and he gave his life for us. But those innocent children, they died in his place. Herod thought he had him, but he didn't. God moves in a mysterious way and his wonders to perform. So today I'm saying thank you all for being with me. Thank you all for sharing this moment. And I pray that as we go forward, we'll be able to have a better relationship and that we wouldn't be having problems as we had here today. May God bless and keep us all. May he make his face to shine upon you all.